recognize Senator Miller. We, we, we're delighted to have you here. And I thank you very much. I was coming over to tell you I have to leave early because I got to be in Richmond for a two o'clock meeting. But I wanted very much to be here, so I'm going to stay until 11, and then I'll have to leave. Well, very good. We're just delighted to have you on the team. Yes, ma'am. Um, first, we'll start with the public comment period. Are there any speakers? We'll have three minutes to speak each. No speaker. Very good. We'll move to the approval of uh, the consent agenda, which refers to the minutes of September 16th, 09, the fiscal year 2009 through 2012 transportation improvement program revision, request for transfer from CMAC funding to Chesapeake, item three, bridge road corridor study final report, and item four, transportation technical advisory committee bylaws final approval. Do I have a motion for the consent agenda? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Very good. We'll now go to the HR TPO project prioritization and selection process project <coughs> report. White. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, we have uh, with us today uh, representatives from uh, Kimley Horn uh, to give us a progress update. Is there anybody here from Kimberly Horn? <laughs> All right, we'll come back to that. Nominating committee progress report. Um, Doug, you've been kind sure, of to help I with can, the fact. Chairman, I can do this fairly quickly. As, as everyone knows, the nominating committee was tasked with um, standing up the, the, our two new committees, the, the Citizen Transportation Advisory Committee, the SeaTac, and the um, Freight Transportation um, Committee. Um, um, and today, I'm going to give you an update on process as far as the Citizen Committee goes, but we're actually you've got at your place actually the nominations for the membership for the um, uh, the freight committee. Um, the, the citizen committee is a little, um, uh, certainly it's bigger, it's a broader group, and we wanted to really give an opportunity for folks to, to identify themselves as, as wanting to be on this committee. So the, the group uh, established some criteria, and, and they're just common sense things that you would expect that uh, you need to live in, the, in one of the jurisdictions in Hampton Roads, you need to have a, an interest in regional transportation planning process, that um, you've got an interest in promoting public involvement, and frankly, that you've got the time to do this. Um, so with that in mind, we actually created an application form that is out on the website. We're starting to put out. We went ahead and we had to be a little presumptuous and go ahead and publish it uh, to get it out there and start collecting, um, uh, uh, get, getting a data bank going of some possible names. And um, uh, so we had our first meeting and sort of everybody agreed to, to that process. Uh, we're gathering applications. We'll gather those applications between uh, when they were posted on October the 8th and um, we'll collect them through uh, November 6th. Uh, we're putting out um, uh, on our website and advertisements. I would encourage you all to, at your public work sessions, on your public stations, whatever process you've got for getting the word out, to encourage uh, folks from your uh, jurisdiction to, to make application. We will make sure that at least one representative from every jurisdiction is, is on this committee. Um, and then when these come in, we will meet again um, in mid-November, call through um, the nominations, and uh, we'll come back to you all at the December meeting with a list of somewhere between 21 and 30 names. We'll probably give ourselves a little cushion and not do the full complement of 30 to make sure that as we get going, if we've, we've, we've missed some constituency or some group, we have the ability to add some, some names to that later. We will also um, set up staggered terms. You'll remember that there'll be three-year terms, but with that initial group, we'll get either a one, two, or three-year uh, term. And uh, again, we'll come to you all um, in December with, uh, with those names. So that's the process that we'll undertake for the citizen committee. And uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions or take any comments. Any for questions of Mr. Smith? We thank you very much for your effort over there, Doug. Right, got one more for you, man. All right. All right. Uh, freight committee, uh, a little quicker. We've got, uh, you'll remember, we're going to have eight names, eight folks uh, on that freight committee. Uh, we have actually, they'll have five-year terms. Uh, the chairman will actually uh, select a chairman, uh, a private sector chairman, and a member of this board to, to chair that commission. Uh, the Virginia Port Authority will staff that group. You've got a list in front of you of the names that we're recommending today. And this is the action item that we would want today is 
frankly, the approval for these names, and I'll give them to you uh, very quickly. And the idea was to get somebody from, from rail, from a ship line, from a third-party logistics firm, from a shipper, and uh, get, get a good cross-section. So our nominations from the committee are uh, Chris Lubers of the Norfolk Southern Corporation in Norfolk, uh, Butch Crane of K-Line America, a ship line in Chesapeake, uh, Keith Helton uh, of Gibbons Transportation, a third-party logistics firm in, in Chesapeake, uh, Jeff Fry from uh, Target, obviously a shipper in Suffolk. Um, Art Moy from the, uh, the executive vice president of the Virginia Maritime Association. Uh, Bill Franks, um, LIDAR Distribution Services in Newport News. Brian Kraft with the um, Walmart Distribution Center in Williamsburg. And William Bell, the director of human resources um, for Northrop Grumman uh, in Newport News. So I would, on behalf of the committee, uh, submit those names for nominations for membership for the uh, freight committee. Very good. Are there any other nominations? Now, what about the chair chairmanship of this? I get to appoint. You, you, you'll appoint uh, one of us as the chair, as the the chair that's the connection to that, and then ultimately you'll appoint uh, one of those folks as a co-chair who will actually sit on this committee with a, as a non-voting member. Since you've done such a wonderful job, would you object to? Uh, <laughs> 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 would you object to serving and chairing it? Uh, when you put it like that, absolutely not. Thank you very much. Glad to do it. Any other nominations? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Thank you very much, Doug. Appreciate it. We will now go back to the project prioritization. Um, Art, uh, 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 We have uh, Carl Tewsbury here with uh, uh, Kimley Horn uh, to give us a summary of where we are today in this project uh, selection program uh, prioritization process. We thank you for being with us today. Well, thank you. Uh, again, my name is Carl Tewksbury, Kimberly Horn. I serve as the project manager. Here with me is Karen McPherson. She's the deputy project manager. Uh, just here to help address any questions that you may have. But I'd like to just take about 10 minutes to uh, give you an update on the project. A um, little agenda for the next 10 minutes is give you a status update um, to talk about the survey results that we had out there. Um, and the action item for today is um, for approval, if you will, of the weighting uh, factor assumptions that uh, are in front of you, or I'm sorry, the, the weighting factors, but we're going to talk about the assumptions to those factors first. Um, the weighting factors themselves, we also have test bed projects uh, that we want to um, share with you, and then the next steps in this process. Uh, where we are today, um, again, this is a, a six-month schedule that we need to um, adhere to uh, to get to a December uh, finish date and you can see what is shown in red is activities that's been uh, completed to date what is in green is what's in in progress right now and we've gone through a lot of legwork in developing the categories and the criteria and surveyed for the the weighting factors and now we're actually putting the tool together and that tool will be used to score the projects um, and that that scoring will then be put forward on that project. And again, that's the technical merit of the project. And it's going to be by category. So it's evaluating one project against another in a specific uh, category, if you will. Um, so that, that tool is under development right now. We met as early as yesterday with the steering committee uh, for the first cut, if you will, of that tool. Um, we're also starting to put some of the methodology together, which is very important how we came about with this process, but also how this tool is applied and used will be part of it as well. Just wanted to recap um, where we are since we were last in front of you, um, which was on September 16th. <coughs> and as a result of that, um, we'd asked for endorsement of the, uh, the process which we received, but what we also heard uh, from the TPO board was the need to uh, get the TAC together to overview and brief them on what this project was about, which we, we did on uh, October 1st. Um, it was a uh, probably a three-hour meeting, give or take, and we talked about the entire process, the scoring process. Uh, we added some evaluation criteria um, to, to the, uh, the, um, the, the system, if you will. And we talked about some of the preliminary survey results that we had at that time. And we put the testbed projects that were out in front 
of us at that point just for review and discussion and those were modified slightly as a result of input. Um, after that meeting, we've met with the TTAC. Um, we got the weighting factors uh, ironed out, if you will, uh, from the survey, and we asked for uh, endorsement of those um, draft weighting factors from the TTAC, uh, which we got on or October 7th. Let's talk about survey a little bit. Um, we had two different surveys, um, one that went out to the technical uh, committee, if you will. Uh, the technical survey went to the steering committee and the TTAC and then other individuals that were recommended by the steering committee. It was only for a, a one-week process or period. We had about 36 surveys completed uh, with most, most agencies represented. The public survey uh, was a little more lengthy process. We put that out to the public for a two-week period from September 17th to the 30th. Uh, about one week into it, we were receiving, when I say we, it was really uh, TPO staff was receiving some concerns and comments about the uh, unclarity of it, and it was a little bit cumbersome to take. So uh, we paused, if you will, in the middle for about uh, a couple hours to discuss how we could modify, refine the survey. It was still live to make it clearer um, for the, the, the citizens and the public that were responding to it. Um, the good news is uh, that following week we had less comment about that, but I think the best news is we had uh, nearly 900 surveys uh, that were completed. Uh, for that short period of time, I think it's outstanding with the, the results that we got and the response that we got from the public survey. Um, what this uh, next graphic is, it shows a, a breakdown uh, by agency of who responded. Uh, just to give you an idea, and as expected, probably by population, those areas that are larger um, had the larger percentage of response. I really want to highlight what we felt was um, validating results, if you will, between this, the, the technical committee and what the public had responded. Uh, they were very, very similar. Uh, we were very surprised, actually, with how close those results were uh, when we asked them to, to weight certain things and what was most important to them, we were very, very surprised how, how close the two fell to one another, which meant they were, they were valid and, and certainly the results that we were getting from there were very reliable. Um, but in the end, we, for that two-week period, if you will, we really feel that um, we have into this process the weighting factors or the opinion of the public and the technical folks of what matters most, and I think we've got things in, in good order, if you will. Um, also, I think we have the right criteria that's behind there to begin with. A um, couple of assumptions. Um, what we wanted to get out of that survey was uh, under each category were the uh, various criteria, and the idea was to have them wait on a scale of 100 what's most important. Uh, so if you had five criteria, it would, it would total up to 100%, uh, percent, if you will. Um, but we looked at, as you can imagine, as engineers would, we looked at the data in every way we could. We looked at the range of the data, the average, the midpoint, and the most common statistics, and it really did fit the bell curve, which meant that the, the, the results we got were pretty valid. Um, the weighting factors, when all said and done, really coincided with those questions that we asked of them. Was it very important? Was it less important or least important? Um, again, validating that the criteria that we had uh, put out there that we had developed, um, for the most part, the public was very in favor of that we were hitting right on the mark, which was very important. Um, we digested all that information, as you can imagine, from the 900 public surveys and the 36 technical surveys down into yet another Excel spreadsheet to look, look at really what those factors were from a percentage standpoint. And um, through the magic of Excel, we came up with recommendations that we put forward to the steering committee and TTAC for recommendations. But again, we, we had the results of the public and the technical in front of us all along as we were making suggestions, um, adjustments, if you will, to those weighting factors. Again, to make, make sure that we're representing what the public and, and um, technical folks are saying. Um, 
Yesterday, we were in the middle of uh, an exercise with the steering committee to, to work through uh, the tool. And again, that's a tool that will score these, uh, these projects. Uh, if you take a specific uh, category, uh, for instance, uh, with, with roads or highways, and you've got a, a criteria of safety, um, under, that, under that safety, there's different ways to weight the importance of that, which we worked through yesterday. Um, through some of that process, we realized there needed to be a little bit of refinement, which is uh, a little bit different than what we had presented to the TTAC, and I'm going to show that to you in a minute. But we also looked at how are we actually measuring each of those criteria. Uh, with that example for safety, one of the ways that we'll measure that, or the MOE that you see there, that's the measure of effectiveness for safety. Uh, for instance, how we measure that is the number of crashes or the number of safety improvements that, that the project offers. Um, so that's, that's actually how the tool gets applied uh, with the measure of, effective, or measure of effectiveness. Um, let's look at the, the weighting factors, and this is where we certainly uh, need your eyes. Um, and there was a slight change. The reason you see two columns there to the right the original weight is what we came up with as we presented to the TTAC. We're looking for uh, a slight refinement, if you will, in two of these categories, highways being the first. And I'll explain the reason why. If you look under air quality, we had assigned five points to that. And one, one reason, uh, as we got through this and looked at it a little bit more yesterday, um, we recognized that really the air quality is somewhat covered already under the congestion level. As you look at um, those first three lines with um, congestion, you have existing level. Then you have the reduction in future congestion level, which will speak to the reduction, obviously, in, in, in the emissions and air quality, if you will. So we think that's somewhat captured there. But also, there's an extensive air quality conformity process that is in place as part of the LR. Uh, TP. So the recommendation we had was to reassign the five points that is under air quality uh, on the highway and move that over to five additional points under project viability. So that's a little shift uh, from what we had previously. Again, it's adjustment. We understand that this, this process is iterative. We're going to go through this a few times. Uh, that's the point of developing this tool and testing it. Uh, to really see if the results that we're getting make sense. Under bridges and tunnels, um, we had not recommended any changes or refinements to what we had uh, shown originally to the TTAC, but um, you can see the breakdown. I, I didn't really get into this in the last one, but just for the purposes of this, um, what you see in the um, darker yellow there is under congestion level, the first line, we're saying congestion level, that's worth 25% of, of the overall points um, for this, um, this category. And then the infrastructure condition is 15, system continuity is 15, safety and security 10, and so on. You can see that. Underneath in the lighter yellow are the sub-criteria, and you have an idea of how that sub-criteria breaks down as far as a percentage. Um, of that, if you look at the congestion level, all those should add up, the 5, 10, and 10 should add up to the uh, primary criteria of 25 percent. So it gives you an idea of how things broke down. And again, we looked very closely at the technical and public survey uh, to make sure that we're uh, pretty much in line with um, what um, both were saying. The process repeats itself for the, the next couple of um, or the rest of the uh, categories, I should say. But what you'll see with some of these in bike and ped, we had less criteria to begin with. Um, so each of the criteria may have a little more heavy weighting. But under this one, uh, we asked for, or we're looking for a refinement as well. And um, really when we got into air quality and emissions um, for the bike and ped, we soon realized that there, there really wasn't a big, a big savings there with the air quality and the uh, emissions. In fact, as an example, with a transit project, you might have over 200,000 tons of emissions reduced as a result of a project 
what we saw with some of these, we had less than a ton. So the range was really small, um, and the differences were minimal. So we're asking that we take this one out, if you will, and reassign those five points over to the project viability again. Under systems management, TDM, and operational improvement projects, um, not looking for any change there. It's the original weighting, as you see. And you can see the breakdown of all those criteria and sub-criteria of how that 100 points, if you will, is made up. Um, I'll highlight on the bottom, though, uh, what we have is those projects that are transportation demand management type um, will assign 25 points um, to that. And I believe we take the 25 out. Isn't that correct? We everything else is factored by 75%. Okay, yeah, everything is factored by 75%. So we add those 25 points in for TDM only projects because they're special and unique, if you will. So there's a uh, separate set of sub criteria for the TDM type of projects. For the transit projects, um, again, no change uh, from what, where we were with the TTAC, uh, the original weighting, as you can see there, and how the 100 points is divided up between the criteria and sub-criteria. Um, ridership is, is certainly going to get the, the most in continuity and user benefit and compatibility with land use, um, followed by the rest. In this one, certainly air quality, there are a lot of separators with the type of uh, transit projects you might do. So uh, we certainly felt that it made sense to keep it in this one. Oops, I did. Sorry about that. Intermodal. <coughs> Don't want to forget that one. Um, the last of the six, if you will. Um, just to give you an idea, we're, we're not looking for any changes with those weightings as well. Um, you can see how it's divided up. About 50% of it, or 50%, goes to those first two, which is it's better accommodating those intermodal movements or improves the rail or vehicular access to the major destinations and cost effectiveness, um, weighing in at about 70% of the total. That's the piece on the weighting factors. Um, once this tool is is further refined and the weighting factors are uh, have been endorsed and, and and hopefully modified for the last time there are about 42 test projects that uh, we have gone out to individuals of the steering committee uh, TTAC also the TAC has seen these uh, um, and w again these are just to test the tool just to, to make sure that the the tool is giving us reasonable and reliable and somewhat defendable results, if you will. But it divides up between 20 highway projects, six bridge and tunnel projects, five transit projects, uh, four system management TDM projects, four bike and ped projects, and three intermodal. Um, I think our criteria was we wanted a minimum of three in each of those categories, and we wanted to make sure that all the agencies were represented um, in, in this list, which we have uh, accomplished that. We were also asked to make sure that we included these um, list of significant projects um, that, are, that are in the test bed. So we will be testing all of these projects, as you can see. And in, in your handout, you should have others. Uh, we thought it would be beneficial to just show this graphical representation of the area so you can see how all the projects lay out uh, uh, across the boundaries of the, uh, the TPO. Um, again, that, that making sure that uh, every agency is represented. Where we are from this point forward is um, once we get endorsement on these weighting factors, um, the tool will continue to move to the next uh, step, if you will, and then we'll put um, the test bed uh, projects in. Um, we've ar already started to populate that, admittedly. We don't have all the data, all the MOEs, if you will, for all those projects. Um, so we don't really know definitively where things are going to shake out from the test bed standpoint. Um, throughout that process, we'll look at those measures of effectiveness and 
just, just a little background on, on those. We're really trying to get data that's reliable, readily available, um, doesn't really take a lot of, lot, lot of effort or have a lot of um, subjectivity to it, if you will, uh, recognizing some of it does, uh, but we're trying to minimize that. With that, we, we think that we can get to a point where we'll have that tool somewhat refined. So then at the November TPO meeting, uh, we want to present those initial results with the tool and those test bed projects. So you have an idea under each of those categories using that tool, how things fall out and would rank, if you will. So at this point, what we're requesting is um, that um, we've got uh, concurrence, if you will, endorsement of the, the, the weighting factors and the progress that we have made um, to date. Uh, on this project. Do we have any questions? Yeah, uh, can I have a few? And uh, I respect the fact that you've got a difficult job. But um, you said you, you surveyed 36 agencies. Is that right? Did I hear that? So 36 individuals on the technical side? Correct. You, is that what, when you say agency, is that what you? No, it's, it's it, the, the 36 may represent, and to be clear, not every agency on the technical technical side was represented right. so we had multiple from one agency if you will but we tried to survey all of the um, agencies on the technical side the technical survey was requested of members of the TTAC and those individuals that they also added to the list so it was really from a technical staff perspective so the request of the technical survey was given to the TTAC. so te it's technical staff is what you mean by an agency Correct. So the TTAC members, and then there were some additional requests to add a few key staff from their agencies from a technical perspective, but that's where the technical Various members of the TTAC asked you to add more people from their Correct. jurisdictions to... And that was requested through the steering committee. Can I have you... Would the Navy be considered, considered an agency? They, they were, I don't believe they were included in that, no. Would the military, any, was the Coast Guard considered an agency? No, they're, they're not part of the steering committee. How about the port? The port was, yes. The port was there? Yes. Oh, we just had some discussion earlier about mm -hmm. being Pentagon South. I mean, in compiling this and, you know, the fact that we don't include the military very much in our planning process, but do you have uh, any intentions of reaching out to the Navy to ask them what their opinion is about and how they would weight these various projects? At this point, I don't believe that we're going to, at, at this juncture, reach out to anyone else. There is talk of another survey, and I don't know, Dwight, if you want to. I mean, I just that was a public survey, but not a technical survey. Right. We, we, we were essentially, uh, Air Frank, wrapping up the technical uh, process here for the weighting factors. Uh, I, you have a good point. Uh, we've not as you said, fully embedded them in this in this process. They do participate with TTAC, with TTAC on a correct. regular basis, and, and we hear from them. But, I mean, has anybody gone to Admiral Harvey to, to just to ask him what he thinks about, <coughs> or, or what his staff thinks about, you know, these various Well, projects? staff have sat in on TTAC. I, I, I don't know if anyone's here. The staff have heard that, all the discussion. Is that a no or a yes? Or We've not gone, to, not gone to the military on the policy level because, and, and the only reason I think we have not is the message we got from them. They don't want to sit at this board, but they do want to serve as a liaison. So you can ask, but we have not. Well, why don't we? Why don't we do that then, Mayor? I believe uh, the Navy participated on the public survey aspect, but not in the. But uh, you're one of 900, in, in the response on the public survey. Yes, sir. I think uh, General <coughs> Benzel's staff participated on the uh, one of the 900 public responses. We're going to make an addition that the military be included in yeah, this would, process. I mean, you've got Langley. I mean, you've got um, a number of of federal installations. Are I don't know who speaks for the Air Force, but I or or the Coast Guard. I, I think I know who speaks for the Navy, but I, it seems to me that would be very valuable. You know, they're a third of our economy. If you start talking about cost effectiveness and all of that, I mean, you'd want to be reaching out to those people at a minimum. I mean, if the Navy's if you're going to wait the response of the Navy in a public survey with the same person who lives on, you know, <laughs> that's right. uh, Rolf Avenue in Norfolk, I mean, it's, I don't think that makes, 
you know, that's intuitively that doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dwight, you're going to add the military? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think the implication of this discussion, though, however, is is that we don't do we don't work with them on selected topics. We need to embed them better into the TTAC and the TPO process. I'm, I'm all for that, but I, you know, uh, if we can get into that global discussion. I'm just this thing is coming down the road. Yeah. Uh, how much longer is the public survey going to be out there? This public survey was completed um, September 30th. It's done. It's done. Yeah. There are a million six hundred thousand folks here. 900 surveys returned. Mm -hmm. um, can I just, one last question. Sure. The distinction between the technical survey and the public survey, how are you going to weight that? Um, we looked at the results of, of both, and again, the, the technical survey was in a lot more detail, um, and quite frankly. That, was that, and I'm sorry, but I, no. the, the technical survey, was that the survey compiled by the 36? The 36 agency members, is that what you? Right. That would right. be the technical survey. Right. Okay. And now you have the, the, the public survey, which I, is uh, complete. Are you going to weight them against each other, or is it just going to, how, how would you do that, average it out? Or? What we did is we looked at the results of the public survey, which was a little more treetop. They, they didn't get into the details of the sub-criteria, but they did weight the criteria. And the result, we looked at the results of the public survey compared those to the technical survey, the weighting, if you will. And let's just take a, a category as an example. Under highways, if you look at safety, the technical folks may have said 22 percent. The public may have said 18 percent. The results were very close to one another. So we compared those side by side, the 900 to the 36. All right, thank you. Boy, one question. Any other questions? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, two things, Carl. First of all, I think the logic of this could be improved greatly if we did two things. One is that on the land use provision, that really is, is it compatible or not compatible with local land use plans? And if it's not compatible, the project shouldn't be tested at all. That's a, that's a first check. So if you move that five or ten points, it doesn't make sense to me to mix that with the utility factors. And then on the back end, to try to mix things like congestion and safety, with project viability also doesn't make sense. That if you do the utility factors, make a determination, and then set, and then to give one or two points to things like additional funding and project readiness, it, that just misses it all together. A project might be high in utility, but have no possibility to move forward. And, and so to me, separating those into a two-step or rather three-step process would make more sense. Now, if you want to go ahead and run this with your projects and see what happens, maybe we ought to do that. But I think this could be refined in a way to improve the decision-making considerably. All right. The nice part about the tool is it does allow some quick changes to those weightings. What, what it also allows us to do is under each of those, let me just go back as an example. Oops to one of those um, just to see the weighting. And let's just take intermodal. Um, under each of those criteria, you'll, you'll get an ultimate score for a project. But we can also look w with this tool of how each of those scored or ranked, if you will. So under that project vi viability, which is that doability, as we talked about at the TAC versus the utility, you could see how that weighed or ranked against everything else. So you can break the score out, if you will, but we're trying to maintain one score. I want to be, be clear. Through the direction of the steering committee after the TAC, they, they had recommended that we keep it as one score. However, you can see what that score is made of. And it, it can look at the utility of the project. In other words, in this case, the first one, two, three, four, five um, criteria, the six being project viability, you can see what that score percentage was. Yeah, but ten points on viability, a project which say has funding in place such as tolls perhaps, right. other project readiness <coughs> factors and environmental gets full ten points could mm -hmm. easily yeah. be outweighed by the other factors. Right. And, and to me it's mixing apples and oranges. So um, I think we have some more work to do there. I think the suggestion is that needs to be on its own but carry more weight. Yeah. Yeah, we have a question over here. Pardon. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I will, I'm, uh, back to the land use issue that was just talked about on the quantitative value of that. Are, are you going to rate that like tax revenue to the locality, jobs creation, which would be 
revenue to the state? Are you going to give any value to um, possible you know, economic redevelopment in some areas? How would you, I, I don't see how you rate that, uh, how you get that quantitative rating for that. Um, it, it is really back to um, what Mr. Tuttle was saying, and, and that's the compatibility of the existing uh, land use patterns and future plans. The way it's currently set up, we can certainly discuss it, but um, it's, it gets the full points if it's compatible, compatible and officially documented. It gets half the points if it's compatible but not officially documented, and if it's not compatible, it doesn't get any of the points. So if the, um, in this case, under this is under the bike and ped, it would not get any of the 10 points if it's non-compatible. So that's, to answer your question, that's how we're measuring it at okay. this point. So it's not a quantitative amount, it's, it's a compatibility amount. Right. Okay. And officially documented. Right. Okay. Mayor Crespo. Thank you. Let me ask, what happens when you have a project that actually falls into three different categories at the same time? Well, and that's a great question. Um, for the testing purposes, right now, we're trying to test it in the appropriate category, if you will. But in the real world, once this hits and there's an application that is filled out for the project, that is the proposer. If it is the city of Chesapeake, what type of category are they looking to put that project under? Um, and, and maybe it's somewhat simply tied to where is the majority of the funding coming from? Uh, recognizing a bridge that's going to have some roadway associated with it is the primary piece of the bridge or is it the roadway? But that is really up to the proposer that's going to put this project forward. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, just a quick comment. I think this is a it's, a, it's a great step forward on where we need to go. I would probably classify this as version 1.0 in a process that needs uh, some additional uh, refinement somewhere along the way. So I, I think running the test bed projects is a, is a good thing. Um, there are some there are some criteria or waiting on some criteria that I that I think are off by quite a large margin and and one I one I'd throw out there would be economic vitality. And I'm not suggesting that we change it for this exercise, but um, what Mayor Frame said, 30 percent of the economic uh, uh, growth in the region is due to the military. Uh, there's tourism at various places. Port certainly is a big part of that. Um, and if you're going to throw five points into something that's going to contribute in a large way to keeping the military, grow the port, keep tourism coming here, five points is just far to uh, giving that short trip. So going forward, I think that we maybe there's fewer criteria and maybe the weights adjust. But I think this is a great step forward. The test bed is a good idea. Um, I think we just need to be open to refinement along the way. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Chairman. Um, for your uh, your study here, I'm I'm not going to uh, really comment on the on the weighting. I think the the question I do have though is that the whole basis for everything you're doing here is, is based on opinion. Am I being this wrong? Uh, there's some subjectivity in there, but there's objectivity in how these are weighted. Some of these results or the MOEs are going to be semi-factual, we're going to get, for instance, traffic volumes on a road, we're going to get safety data on the road, we're going to get a pavement scoring on the road, but there, there, there's going to be some subjective um, input there that uh, depending on the type of project they have, is it a regional type of project, is it multi-jurisdictional, or is it local? And what we're looking for as the proposer puts this project forward, they're, they're going to have to make a statement and make their case, if you will, 
of why that project is a regional project as opposed to what others might think is multi-jurisdictional. I, I, and following that, I, I think that you're, um, to make this, uh, uh, I think, really viable in, uh, in, in kind of this arena or the arena, if you go exactly like the community, is that we have to be careful of how you, this choice of words when you start talking about surveys. Surveys can say, I mean, especially when you talk about 900, and, and Major Frank just brought up a point that, you know, you look at the over a million people here and you get these small numbers. It, it implies that you're heading down a path uh, for uh, guidance and policy where you may have a very small representative sample and whether it's viable or not. Because the people around this table, the elected representatives, can give you an opinion and they represent a whole lot more than the 900 people that you're going to deal with. So I just caution you on that. The most, one of the most important parts of this, though, that I'm, I'm kind of locked onto, is that at the end, when you, through the sum, you, you go to your next step and you talk about the MOEs, I would be more interested in the objectives that are tied to those MOEs. I assume that there's going to be objectives there, right? And then you can say that that project, based upon you know, what it means to us, the objective is to do, you know, enhance transportation, improve traffic flow, increase, you know, commercialization, whatever you want to call it for that particular project. But that MOE is what you're, you're driving to with that objective. I mean, that should be tied together, right? Right. And will you have MOPs with this? Those are measures of performance tied to this project? I don't believe so. Okay. We have, uh, Mr. Chairman, though, we have in implementing the CMAC RSTP, once implementation is done, we've come back and have actually tested the performance, and in some cases, we have adjusted significantly. So then you will have a performance. We'll right? do that in the okay. process okay. after this is done and after we get some experience under our belt. Well, the important part of this, though, to me was the, when you said the MOEs, it's tied to that objective for whatever project you've got listed, because if we have to compete for the same dollars, okay, and I assume that's kind of how I'm kind of taking this, then, you know, if I think of it from a regional perspective, I want to get the most bang for the buck for everybody in here because it's coming back into the state one way, in one form or another. Any other questions or comments? Uh, yes, sir. I'd just like to add one comment, just to follow up on your comment. I do think this is a good first step. Um, and, and I think the most important thing you mentioned just then is that we need to do it from a regional perspective. Uh, regardless of what the projects are, I think this is a good first step as long as we have the right criteria the right categories that we can properly evaluate projects. So I really do think this is a good question. Very good. Any other questions? Sure. Yes. Yeah, just uh, just want to reiterate, prioritizing these projects is probably the single most important thing that I believe as a legislator that we can do uh, as we prepare our region to compete for transportation dollars. The question that I would ask to the engineers is, it, I'm, I'm just not familiar with this process that you've created, but I, I feel like I'm you know, voting or agreeing to an arbitrator in a case, and I just I hope I'm getting the right arbitrator. Uh, have you have you done this process later, uh, elsewhere? I mean, have you done this? Has, has this been done somewhere else? We, we looked at um, research throughout, um, I think, 30 different agencies originally, digested that down to what we felt uh, the 10 most reasonable would be. We met with the steering committee. And then from that, we had what we call benchmark agencies. We certainly didn't want to recreate the wheel. Answering the question um, for Kimley Horn, this, this particular engineer, we've done this process once in Texas, but not this team, not the, the same group of, of, of people. But a lot of this information that we put out is based on national research. Some of those MOEs are from what we had found in doing research and what other agencies, how they were measuring things. Um, this, is, th this is clearly different. Every agent or every area, I should say, is unique. You just can't take Denver and plug it in here. You can't take Atlanta and plug it in here. But from the, when we distilled the 30 to the 10, we came up with six benchmark agencies throughout the country that were as close to being similar to this organization as we could get, quite frankly. And we've used that information, um, their categories, their criteria, as part of this, uh, in, in the development of, of where we are today. Dwight wanted to add to that as well. Yeah, Delegate Oder, uh, I, I may have mentioned this briefly at a previous meeting. So it's a good question to ask. We need to get it clear. We, and I look at this separately, the prioritization process having two s distinct separate uh, 
of, um, of elements. One is this technical analysis of rating and ranking. And that is to be viewed by you folks that are in this table as the tool. Then we will move to the prioritization process where you take that information as a tool and this body ultimately will make the decision on the prioritization. And we can expand on that, but I hope that's clear. The prioritization is not, is not completely guided by this rating and ranking. It is your tool around this table to have a discussion to prioritize once you've received that information. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Can I have a motion to uh, approve the recommendations? So moved. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Got a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Very good. We'll now move to item number seven, transit vision plan phase two, update by the Virginia Department of Rail and Public Transportation. We have the chair with us today, uh, Amy Inman from the Department of Rail and Public Transportation. She's the transit planning manager. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, board members. I appreciate this time to be able to come in and present to you um, an update on where we stand with the transit vision plan and how we're going to be moving forward uh, over the next few weeks and kicking off and working with uh, you all and your planning staff and uh, certainly working with the public. Just by way of um, an overview of what we're going to be talking about today, I just want to give a little bit of a background on the, uh, the Transit Vision Plan Phase 1, talk about the scope items that, that we're going to be moving forward with in the Phase 2, and then schedule and product and uh, leave time for some questions. So just by way of background, uh, the Hampton Roads Transportation Plan Organization, this organization, completed the, the vision plan phase one in early 2009. The uh, phase one was based on a compilation of various transit corridor studies that have been uh, completed over the past two decades, along with further public and stakeholder involvement and technical analysis. 25 corridors emerged with recommendations ranging from increased bus service, express bus, bus rapid transit, streetcar, light rail, commuter rail, totaling over 300 miles. There are actually 18 corridors, but there were variations of, of that, which emerged to the 25 uh, overall corridors. Activity centers were identified uh, within each of the corridors based on current uh, local comprehensive plans. This was a great first step. It was certainly something that helped everybody to understand what a blueprint, where the uh, ideas have been in the past and where they are right now in terms of regional uh, rapid transit. Our point is right now that we really want to work in consultation with uh, HRT and the Williamsburg Area Transit Association to conduct and manage this second phase via a project management team. We certainly want to continue interacting with the local jurisdictions and the TPO uh, to con will continue to play an integral role throughout this planning process via a project steering committee. The public involvement will continue to be an important cornerstone to the refinement of the regional vision plan for transit in the Hampton Roads area. <coughs> we've worked with HRT and WADA and we uh, are moving forward with AECOM will serve as the primary consultant firm with Pulsar and Roadside and Harwell as subconsultants. <coughs> the objectives for the phase two is to refine the Transit Vision Plan Phase 1 recommendations to really provide the blueprint for the regional rapid transit system in the Hampton Roads area. And of course, in consultation with each locality, review and, if necessary, refine the corridor recommendations to reflect the appropriate transit technology and level of transit investment based on the, the predicted and projected uh, land use compatibility. We'll analyze the compatibility of the existing and future comprehensive plans with the Transit Vision Plan Phase 1 recommendations. And we'll assess the current and future market conditions within each of the corridors and then refine, work with everyone to refine the, the Phase 1 transit recommendations to be compatible with the findings of the land use and the market assessment. And this will help to develop the marketing materials to communicate the Transit Vision Plan recommendations and the benefits of transit. This is something, of course, with any visioning process, we really need to be able to work with the public and communicate what the benefits of transit will, are and how the, this, the future for transit in an evolutionary process uh, might unfold in the Hampton Roads area. 
So we will continue the stakeholder and public involvement. That will certainly, again, be a very critical piece of, of this process. What we, our, our products from this will be, of course, again, meeting with the individual jurisdictions to discuss the transit recommendations for their respective corridors. We know that, that in the last phase, we did have a steering committee. Folks did have a good understanding of what the recommendations are. Uh, but we certainly, again, want to go, go forward and, and help to have that dialogue of how are these recommendations really matching up with what your vision is for this area, for this corridor, and how do your land use plans and policies reflect and support that transit investment. We'll develop economic profiles for each of the corridors and to understand the, the transit investment and land use compatibility analysis. So again, we want to understand how the transit investment and the land use, how those two things are, are compatible because with the land use being very critical, again, to supporting a major in investment <coughs> study for transit, uh, it's, it's you know, very critical that we do this. The refinement of the, the phase one recommendations, uh, again, will be predicated on this compatibility and working with the localities. We'll, we'll coordinate uh, with the project updates, with the steering committee, with the, hemp, with the TPO, with the water board, with HRT planning committee and board. We'll have public meetings and we'll develop marketing campaign uh, and copies of marketing campaign materials for these agencies to move forward with. Our schedule is to have an October uh, project kickoff, probably be closer, of course, to the end of October, first part of, of November. We're currently in our uh, uh, process of procurement for our consultant. Uh, the October to June time frame will be coordinating with the steering committee, with the boards, uh, with the planning committees, uh, and we'll be uh, developing the data collection and, and again having the individual meetings through the October, November time frame. In December, we'll begin conducting the market assessment and conduct the land use analysis, which will conclude in the June time frame at the end of the study. Uh, in Janu between January and March, we'll have the transit vision uh, and economic conditions analysis will be conducted. In March, we'll have the phase two draft recommendations available for review and comment by the steering committees, the stakeholder review and comment period. Again, will happen in that March, April timeframe. So we'll be coming back to this board with our recommendations and we'll certainly be working with the steering committee that, that was established in, in the first phase. We'll most likely want to expand that committee to include the, the local land use planners as well just to make sure that we have a good representation of both the technical engineer side and, and the land use planning side. And then we'll have our final recommendations uh, by June and the marketing materials then will be available. With Any questions? Way. Thank you very much. And just uh, one, I've got a couple of questions just on the mm -hmm. timeline, if you don't mind going back sure. to, the, to the last slide. When you talk about in October, November, individual meetings with localities, mm -hmm. um, what does that look like? Are you meeting with staff? Are you coming to councils? Are you we'll coming be, to the citizens? Mm -hmm. We'll be meeting with the staff primarily and whoever they feel needs to be at that meeting. We really want to have the dialogue with your planning staff and certainly the engineers to say here's here's the recommendations <coughs> that we know were in phase one we want to understand how that is compatible with what you all see for your areas and if not if it doesn't or if we don't think the land use of the market can really handle a uh, light rail we might want to refine that uh, recommendation to local bus or express bus something that might be more compatible with the area and the land use and then Mr. the public Ollie. meetings in the April May time frame look like what? Is that a couple of the regions? Is that one in each locality? Have you thought that through yet? We have, and certainly we want to have one in each of the in the peninsula and in the uh, Williamsburg area, and then one on the in the Norfolk area in this, you know, south side. Um, our our budget is is fairly constrained, so I, I would like to have a lot more public involvement. Uh, it, we, we feel if, if we can really engage uh, the stakeholders and then go back out to the public with good recommendations and, and receive their comments at that time, uh, we ho hopefully will we'll capture that. Jimmy, do you have a question? Is this the plan where the fast ferry gets considered? There is, yes. I, I yes, yes and more, Jim. It, it covers everything. Yeah. We've, we've actually... The phase one actually uh, is our first really attempt, I think, 
incredible attempt uh, at, this, at this body to treat transit the way we've been doing highways for all these years. And so, you know, we, we learn in phase one, and to their credit, we're going to a phase two and embellish this a bit more, and it should be wide open. I, I'm thinking, I think what Doug is saying, there's some implication here, Doug, maybe we need to get this, Amy, this board more involved in the interim steps so that we don't come in at the last minute and you ask them to approve something this is the first time they've really been able to absorb it. Sure. And we, we can certainly do that um, as we're drafting the recommendations, bring that to this to this board and provide that opportunity for comment. Paul, did you have a question? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned light rail. Are you going to start, are you going to get into the study of where a light rail system for the region might? Yes. How that might be expanded? Yes. Really? The, well, the phase one really looked at all the, the possibilities for the different technologies. Light rail was a strong consideration in most of those corridors. What we would like to do is go back and confirm that those recommendations uh, are valid and, and consistent with the locality's vision for these areas. Just, I mean, many, many years ago, there was some discussion about trying to have a light rail system that ran basically from <coughs> Williamsburg through a multimodal to all the way to Virginia Beach. Are you going to be looking at that? Is, is that too broad or is, I mean, we haven't picked that up in a long time. Right. Um, that, that is a rec there has been recommendations for light rail from the Williamsburg area or commuter rail. And, and across the Portsmouth through, you know, yes. the tunnel. Yes. You know, and Chesapeake. And, mm -hmm. and are you going to look at the heavy rail thing too? Uh, it, it will most likely, it will be considered, but this is really trying You're to be something that, that cuts, HRT <laughs> and, <laughs> and WADA will, it's going okay. it, to be something that, right. that we'll want to talk about, no doubt, and, and maybe this would she coincide with, with that well, process. Well, just, just no, to we, go ahead. Paul's questions are, are, are really important questions because it, at least an early draft of this, had um, light rail coming through the Midtown Tunnel, had a lot of stuff, and, and that, that stuff gets on paper, and it's probably, you know, Paul and I had arguments over, you know, how viable that was and whatnot. I said, hey, man, there's a regional transit vision plan that's gotten in there. And then the new version came out, it's not in there anymore. But it's, it is, uh, when this stuff gets on, <laughs> when it gets on paper, it's real, and we've got to understand what's in there, and, and I think this is, there's a, an enormous amount of, of information in this thing. And that I, to Dwight's point, I think this body's got to have a pretty good handle on before these public meetings start in April and May. And um, it, it, to that point, to that end, where is this document? We actually had a hard time finding the current version. Is it on your website? Where, where is um, it? It may still be on the the TPO's website. Uh, there, there was a project website that that was developed in Phase One that was um, removed when that first phase. Uh, completed, we'll, we we could certainly have another place for folks to be able to access that document. And if if anyone would like to see that prior to that, let me know, and we can make sure that you have a, an electronic copy of it. Any other questions or comments? Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much. We appreci I appreciate it. Uh, the next on the agenda was correspondence of interest. One thing I would bring to your attention. I, I hope y'all saw the letter from uh, Mayor Ward. Uh, <coughs> She was unable to attend, and she has some wonderful thoughts in her letter. But one thing she did state, she thought it would be imperative that a legislative committee be created within the month. And that would tie into, we're in the process of hiring a transportation, is it legislative administrator? Administrator. That would be working with that person. And does anyone object if we move forward with that? I hear none. You know, we'll, we will move forward with that. And finally, I, I know that I sent a letter that's in there as well that's just stating that we need to get the uh, prior, prioritized listing of projects to the General Assembly in January and also perhaps provide some sort of information on revenue stream. And um, so, anyway, I just pray out here. Just one on. last comment. In, in, in Mayor Ward's letter, the other paragraph talks about this idea that we talked about in the PDC of getting particular members sort of deeper in certain topics. And I don't want to lose, I know we don't want oh, to no, I was just saying that, that, that was referred to just this month. I, all her ideas are very good, I thought. Very good. Please. 
I know several months ago we talked about doing a risk analysis slide. Are you going to change your risk analysis before we open Yes, let me, let me rehash the sequence <laughs> so we understand where we're coming from. In April, before we knew we were going to do this technical analysis that Carl and Karen talked about, we agreed to sort of open up and do a risk assessment. Well, the rating and ranking is a huge piece of that risk assessment. When the results come, what I was telling Mayor, Mayor uh, Sessions was, I believe when you all see the rating and ranking, you're going to get a feel for what's going to, what's going to probably stay based on this technical route and what's probably going to, have to fall out. And I, I heard you all loud and clear, I think you in particular said, before we take any, we don't want to take any action, we understand the implication of officially at the TPO board level opening up the 2030 plan. Because once we move into that, and, we, and if we do, and that's in uh, Mayor Sessom's letter, if we do move to amend the 2030 plan, again, it has to be fiscally constrained. This tool is going to tell us what project going to rank high, which ones will rank low. Implication is what stays and what's probably going to look, drop off. And I think of those six or seven major projects, depending on the revenue streams that are considered palatable, any of them, some of them might fall off. And that, that's where the risk comes in. Any other questions about that? Any old or new business? I have something about number nine. I know the audit is part of the FYI and the TPO agenda, and it was an action item in the, in the PDC agenda. And that was probably appropriate considering the structure at the time of the audit period. But I would think going forward with the new, ME, uh, in the new um, agreement that the audit probably should be accepted and possibly two audit documents should uh, happen next year. And I just kind of throw that out for consideration and thought by staff. It's going to need some legal review on yeah, that, uh, yeah. uh, Mr. Goodson, regarding the audit of, see right now it's the TPO function and the PDC right, right. function. As, and I've had a discussion with, with Nancy and with, with uh, Don Britt with Goodman regarding this entity or function, and I'm going to need some legal help before we, but we, we'll move to see what we can do and how we can continue to distinguish until some legislative action takes place. Yeah, I think at a minimum we should both accept the audit next year. And, Probably a good uh, idea. I would yeah. agree. Any other questions or comments? Yes, sir. Uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to Mr. Farmer about it, uh, but um, the National Capital Regional Transportation Planning Board is going to uh, apply for a public acceptability and regional road pricing. Can it be designed to garner public support grant through the value pricing process? And we were just wondering uh, if uh, folks here in Hampton Road should be interested in picking back on, picking back on that step. Can you get can you evaluate that? And let us know. The deadline is November 3rd. Uh, the, the question came to us about a week ago as we were literally pushing the agenda out the door. And the question we thought was, could we bring it to the board and endorse VDOT piggybacking a grant application with the, the National Capital TPB? And I said yes. In correspondence after that, we were then told we would be the applicant, and I said, I'm not going to be able to accept that at this point. But because I hadn't come to the board and asked the board, are you ready to endorse the concept of congestion pricing and an application to put that on a, uh, for a grant to put that on the table? We can do that today if you want. And if the board directs me to be the applicant or to endorse your application, I think it's on the table, but if, again, I didn't get the information until about a week ago. Is that just an endorsement? I mean, it cost what, us anything? I, I mean, I don't have a clue well, what you're talking us, about it here. It'll so. cost the staff if we have to administer the grant, but I can do that if you folks want us to. But the other, the other issue is, are, have you had enough dialogue to say, I want to go, I want to jump feet first into congestion pricing? I think Mayor Frank can tell you the last time we did it was a study. I mean, it broke loose here. and. I think we have to discuss it eventually, and Mayor Ward and I have discussed it, and I think several others, but I, you know, I wasn't going to say yes before I come to the board and say... Well, I just hate to see in. the thing come in five minutes before the meeting is over yeah. uh, and not have any knowledge about it. Well, I'm going to say we're not prepared to actually do what you're potentially suggesting because 
we don't know the fallout based on what we might recommend or not recommend. We don't have that kind of information. And just as you just mentioned, at the last uh, moment, it's very difficult to make a correct decision, or at least uh, one that would be appropriate. I had requested VDOT staff to be here. They said they couldn't do it, and I thought, well, at this point, I don't know how you make it happen and have a legitimate discussion before you all make a decision to jump into this issue. Well, well that's, that's certainly a reasonable um, expectation. I didn't expect much different from that. But I just wanted to make the group aware okay. that there is a possibility. But he didn't want to do it. Hey, back and no. All right. Any other business? Thank you all for your attendance. Sure. Wait,